Hello everyone and welcome to the video presentation about the FMCW radar system for drone detection designed by the team ETF Belgrade. Commercial drones are becoming more and more affordable as time goes on. This means that criminal activities with one or multiple drones is becoming cheaper and more available to different groups of people. A good example was during the conflicts in Syria where ISIS used drones to bait out extremely expensive American Patriot missiles. Another use of drones for terrorism would be in form of drone suicide bombers which are mounted with improvised or even professional explosives. Apart from terrorism usage there is also military usage such as reconnaissance or mounting guns or mini grenade launchers on drones. Drones are small and quick, and in most cases catch their victims completely by surprise, hence the need to detect them in time. Commercial DJI drones, Mavic 2 Pro, can go up to 70 km an hour, with battery life of over half an hour. The current Guinness record holder is a Racer drone, DRL Racer X, which speed goes up to 263 km an hour. Drones are made mostly of plastic, with the exception of circuitry and mortars. Since a drone's width is greater than its height, horizontal polarization is optimal. Since metal is generally the better reflector, mostly plastic drones are that much harder to detect. There is one exception, propellers. Doppler processing of our system allows a clear distinction of a drone in the RD map. It is visible as smearing in the Doppler axis due to different parts of the propeller having different radial speed, which is a typical pattern for drones. This property allows distinction of a drone from a static target, a wall for example. This is exceptionally useful in urban or indoor areas. Also, Doppler FFT provides further increase to signal-to-noise ratio. To detect a commercial drone at 100 meters, transmitter power was calculated using the radar equation. Calculated transmitter power is 13 dBm. One of the main advantages of this system is software adjustable signal parameters and processing used for performance optimization. The hardware is relatively simple, some of it in form of commercial components such as mixers and amplifiers, while others in form of our own PCB designs. Basic principle of every radar is the measurement of time of flight. It is the time needed for a signal emitted from a transmit antenna to be reflected from a target some distance away and to return to a receiving antenna. Knowing the speed of propagation of electromagnetic wave, the distance of the target can be calculated from the time of flight. Most traders use short pulses of electromagnetic energy to measure the distance of the target. After emitting a pulse, the receiver switches on and collects echoes of distant targets. Delay of the echo is equal to the time of flight. This approach allows for two targets to be discerned as long as their distances are not close enough for the echoes from them to overlap. Or, in other words, shorter pulses allow for better spatial resolution. Another approach to designing radar systems is the Frequency Modulated Continuous Wave or the FMCW radar. These radars emit electromagnetic radiation continuously, with only its frequency linearly changing during the measurement period. This type of signal is called chirp signal. A delayed chirp signal differs in frequency from its original. By multiplying a delayed chirp with the reference, we get a baseband signal that contains a sign at the frequency that is proportional to delay and, by extension, to distance to the target. For flight times that are much lower than the length of chirp interval, the frequency of the modulated signal can be shown to be a percentage of bandwidth sweeped by the chirp. This percentage scales with flight time and, by extension, with range of target. The modulated signal is sampled by an AD converter with sampling time Vs. By performing FFT on the resulting samples from a single chirp interval, we get a distribution of reflections over range. This operation maps the input samples to the frequency domain in the minus Vs half to plus Vs half range. The number of samples in a single chirp gives the frequency resolution of 1 over the length of the chirp. By combining these two equations, we can calculate range resolution of an FMCW system, which is determined by bandwidth allocated to the radar and nothing else. From the result of this FFT, 
only cells that correspond to the ranges of interest are taken from a number of consecutive chirp intervals. This data is grouped in a matrix as shown, and another round of FFT is performed on the samples corresponding to the same range from different chirp intervals. This FFT isolates minute shifts in current phase of reflections of objects that are moving radially to the radar. This separates them from static reflectors and makes them easily visible in a range Doppler map. Traditionally, radars use a rotating, highly directional antenna to discern angular location of the target. This approach requires moving parts, which are hard to assemble and can be prone to failure. In this design, a different approach is taken. A receiver consists of a number of dipole antennas, which form an antenna array. Signals from each of these channels is processed in range and Doppler domains, and then a beamforming algorithm is applied. This algorithm isolates signals coming from particular directions by delaying signals from each channel by a certain amount. When appropriately delayed and summed, signals from target directions will interfere constructively, while signals from other directions will be suppressed. These delays are calculated for every direction of interest and beamforming is applied to all the cells of range Doppler maps from different channels. In effect, this achieves the same result as having a highly directional antenna that is physically rotated, but without moving parts. Additionally, this allows for refresh rates much faster because it is limited only by software performance and not by physical antenna rotation. After all these steps, the result is a domain that differentiates reflections by their range, Doppler shift and angle. This allows easy localization of moving targets, even in regions with lots of static obstacles and reflectors. On this detailed connection diagram, all of the components of our radar can be roughly distributed into three categories, the microwave components, the analog and digital components. We are now going to describe each of these categories in detail. As per contest rules, a band had to be chosen from a list of ISM bands. The higher we go, the less range we are able to achieve, but the system is smaller and the spatial resolution is better because of more available bandwidth. For that reason, we chose a band around 5.8 GHz. It gives a good compromise between all the system parameters, while the system remains small and easy to transport and install. Additionally, this frequency is low enough for discrete components to be used, which lowers the price of production. Almost all of our hardware is designed and made by our team and tailored suited to the application at hand. Modular nature of our solution allows for particular modules to be isolated, tested and studied, which makes it a good platform for studying radar systems and their components. We use the high quality Rogers 3003 substrate for all the parts involved in transmitting the 5.8 GHz signal to ensure low losses and precise knowledge of dielectric parameters. Analog Devices Evaluation Board ADF4158 is used as signal generator. This board produces a chirp signal which is with adjustable parameters at frequencies around 5.8 GHz. The output of this board is connected to two power amplifiers, first in the function of pre-amplifier and the other with high output power that ensures an adequate signal level for target detection as well as demodulation. Output of power amplifier is connected to the Wilkinson divider. One output then goes to the transmission antenna and the other goes to local oscillator ports of demodulators. Antennas used are printed dipole antennas. They are designed as to have an input impedance of around 50 ohm in the entire band used by radar. Additionally, the radiation pattern is pretty much uniform in a wide arc in, in front of them, which allows for a wide coverage area for a single radar. Nulls in the radiation patterns are very pronounced, 
which allows for an effective isolation of receiver from transceiver. This is very important for FMCW radars because they radiate energy all the time. If this isolation didn't exist, high power emitted from a transmitter would threaten to push the receiver into saturation. Signal meant for local oscillator is divided into 8 signal lines by a 3-stage Wilkinson divider. These signals are too weak to drive the mixer in demodulator, so they are amplified in receiver blocks. Demodulator is constructed with two mixers connected as shown. They are positioned in such a way to allow phase differences between their ports that make this circuit into an IQ demodulator. Receiving antenna is connected to the RF port of demodulator over the low noise amplifier. Received signals are demodulated by the reference chip. The modulated signal is then led onto the baseband board where the processing continues. After previously described down conversion, obtained low frequency analog IF signals are passed via 2.54 mm pink header connectors to the baseband board. The signals are then DC blocked, filtered, biased and amplified. Filtering is achieved by a high-pass RC filter with cutoff frequency of around a kilohertz. This also serves as a biasing network for non-inverting pin of the operational amplifier, which is configured as a non-inverting amplifier. Due to the voltage offset of the operational amplifier, setting the gain to around 80 may be achieved only if potentiometers are used. Feedback network is realized with two potentiometers connected as shown and it ensures proper biasing and tuning of the gain. We had measured a unity gain frequency of this amplifier to be around 800 kHz. After the op-amp stage, the signal is passed through the RC low-pass anti-aliasing filter and then sampled via the Texas Instruments ADS7042 ADC, who then communicates with the digital part of the system. All of the boards are powered using a single multi-stage linear voltage regulator board which features the 7809, 7805 and LF33CV voltage regulators. Even though the losses in such systems are high, the injected noise is low, compared to the switching supplies which favor them in our design. Power lines are connected using JST-XH connectors for microwaves, amplifiers and screw terminals for baseband supply. Power board also generates 9 volts required to drive the RF signal generator. It is the job of the digital portion of the system to interface with the ADCs, process the signal coming from the mixers and send it to a PC where it is presented to the operator via a GUI application. The digital system is implemented on RTZ7-20, a hobby-oriented development board built around Zinc 7000 FPGA. Build Programmable Gate Array, or FPGA for short, is essentially a programmable digital circuit. FPGA can be programmed to emulate any digital circuit design from simple logic gates to advanced signal processing computers such as the one used in this project. FPGA allows the programmer to create an architecture specifically designed for a particular task, such as processing the signal from a radar and achieve processing power that is orders of magnitude greater than that of a general purpose CPU. The digital system is a pipeline that consists of several independent stages. Each stage receives data from the previous one, processes it and passes it on to the next one. The first stage of the pipeline is interface with ADCs. Each of the eight antennas has two ADCs corresponding to I and Q components of its signal. Those 16 ADCs communicate with the FPGA using a simple SPI interface. They are connected to FPGA pins using eight RJ45 aka Ethernet cables. Those cables are specifically designed to transfer high-frequency digital signals, which makes them well-suited for this purpose. Each cable has four pins, two for data channels of the two ADCs connected to it, and two for the shared clock and chip select channels. 
When the FPGA receives the trigger signal, it starts recording a chirp consisting of 256 samples from the ADCs. 64 consecutive chirps are used to form a single range Doppler map. Then come the digital signal processing pipeline stages. They use Xilinx Fourier transform IP cores to convert recorded chirps into a series of range Doppler maps. Each range Doppler map contains information about speed and distance of targets at a certain azimuth, and there are 32 of them covering radar's entire field of vision. Those RD maps are then sent to the onboard ARM microcontroller running a simple piece of software that relays them to the PC using serial communication. The soldering itself turned out to be a challenge for itself, for the chips we were soldering are very tiny and difficult to solder. Several methods have been devised to solder them, however the most uh, successful one we've had was to use hot air gun and uh, basically do it one by one.